Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is William Nick, and I have the privilege of serving as your pastor here at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church, where our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And our vision for living out that mission is to make God real by loving, connecting, and serving just like Jesus. And our prayer for you this day is that you would have an encounter with the risen Lord, that you'd be reminded of God's grace, God's love, and God's mercy. I know it was a cold one this morning, so for everyone here in worship, thank you for coming out. I heard the roads aren't too bad, and once we cleared things off, they kind of just stayed cleared off. That that sun has a really good opportunity, even if we can't see it, those UV rays work uh, their wonder. So for those in worship, we are so glad that you are here. And for those that are worshiping with us online, we too are so glad that you've decided to join us online. Uh, we do want to remind you that just if you want to say hello to us, we've got our moderator uh, ready to say hello to you, to touch base with you. If you have any prayer requests, any joys, concerns, things going on, make sure to put on there and we will be praying for you this week. Now, a few announcements I have. One that I'm really excited about, our, our, our newest uh, position of the uh, uh, fellowship activity coordinator has put together a Euchre tournament for us, and we have only a few spots left. I didn't, I didn't check. They may actually already be full, but we're getting close. Um, so the Euchre tournament is next Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, come and be a part of it. There's going to be some door prizes, some snacks, and a lot of fun stuff. Now, I am already going to be there, but I'm still looking for that partner, so if if you think you got what it takes to be my partner, no, I'm joking. But honestly, if you want to be and you don't have another partner, let's let's uh, be together and let's show them how uh, who's your hospitality by by whooping some behinds. All right, so um, that's what we've got going on Euchre Tournament next Sunday. Today, our youth group is going to the Indy Field game. Uh, we're meeting here at 1.30. We're going to probably be back around 7 o'clock. We really don't know. Puck drop is at 3 o'clock. It's usually a two-hour game. And then afterwards, because it's family uh, night, we're going ice skating. Um, so with the players, which is a lot of fun, and then the mascot uh, Nitro comes out, and it's and it's a good fun. So um, this is probably one of the biggest events we've done in a while. We have 40 people. Um, that are signed up to go to this, including Troop 309 that's going to be a part of it as well. So thank you to everybody that signed up, and thank you to the very uh, generous uh, youth group that is helping with the cost. That uh, The tickets are only $10 a person, so the youth group uh, really uh, went above and beyond for that, and we're so thankful. The last announcement I have is in, the, uh, in February 5th, our first Sunday in February, we're going to start a brand new mini-sermon series, a three-week sermon series, and it's entitled Unplugged, Disconnect to reconnect. Um, and we're going to be starting with this question, are we addicted to our devices? And we're going to be talking about how our relationship to technology can be uh, full of perils and also can be full of blessings for our community, our families, and our loved ones. So I, I, I know that this affects a lot of us. For some of us, you may have no issues with your relationship with technology, but I know you know someone that does. So I hope you will uh, join us uh, for that uh, sermon series, Unplug, Disconnect to reconnect. So by far, I did not touch base with everything that's in our bulletin. I was seeing if I have a bulletin that's over there. Uh, but make sure you grab your bulletin, see what's going on. If you're online, uh, check out Facebook. We've got a lot of ways that you can stay connected. And if you are not part of our newsletter, our email that goes out every Friday, that is one of the best ways to stay connected. Uh, now, before we join in our call to worship, I'm going to have Kathy Derrick come forward. She's going to come up on behalf of Amy Money with an invite for our outreach team. Kathy? Amy asked me to tell you that I know you're going to be excited about this. There is a meeting next Sunday right after church for the outreach team. So she is welcoming anyone to come with new ideas for the new year. Good morning. My name is Ryan Linewalk, and I have a privilege of serving as your liturgist this morning. Let us join together in the call to worship. The Lord is our light and our salvation. Why should we be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of our life. What have we to fear? Let us shout with joy to God. Let us sing and make music. My name's Lori Hayes, and I'm the worship leader here at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church. On behalf of myself and all the excellent musicians we have, we are so blessed to be in worship with you this morning. You know, it's not every day that we get to do something a little different. And today, um, we, with the theme today was being time. And looking through all these different songs about time, I found that there were several secular songs as well 
um, that seem to fit. And this song is a very familiar song to many of you people. Many of you will know this and recognize this. But I ask that you really like listen to the words and apply the words as well as we're singing along. And just it's a good rem reminder of how the passage of time and keeping things that are very important at the forefront of us. So please join along this morning as we sing Cats in the Cradle. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. To walk while I was away, and he was talking for I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you. You know, I'm gonna be like you. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. to throw I said not today I got a lot to do he said that's okay and he walked away but his smile never dimmed and said I'm gonna be like him yeah you know I'm gonna be like him He came from college just the other day So much like a man I just had to say Son, I'm proud of you, can you sit for a while? He shook his head and he said with a smile What I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the car keys See you later, can I have them, please? And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon My new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu But it's sure nice talking to you, Dad It's been sure nice talking to you And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me He'd grown up just like me My boy was just like me And the cat's in the cradle and the silver spoon Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, our light and our salvation, shelter us in your love. O oh God, our stronghold, protect us from danger. We come with shouts of joy to worship you this day. We come with song and music to celebrate your love. We come with longing to see your presence. Be with, Be with us now, now O God, as, as we sing your, your praises. praises. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share Christ's peace with none another. We're now dismissed for Children's Church.
Before we take up our offering, um, I just want to, uh, again, I'm just so overwhelmed and excited about our musicians that are challenging and having fun up here. So, uh, Joanna, thank you for your continued leadership and prayers for your recovery. Um, uh, continued thanks to Lori and the band for their leadership and, and playing some fun songs for us. You guys are doing a great job, so thank you for all of that. It is now time to take up our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. This is our opportunity to give back just a portion of those many blessings that our God has bestowed upon us. I do want to remind you that online giving is available at pittsburghumc.org. Uh, backslash giving. And for those in worship, you can utilize our green bookmark um, to, uh, to know how to give online and also to signify your gift online this day. So without further ado, let us give generously as our God has generously given to us. God, we have seen your glory, felt the touch of your love, and felt your presence with us. With joyful hearts, we offer our gifts. Having heard your call, we offer our lives and our service to you. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn, Take Time to Be Holy, it's number 395.
As we come to our time of prayer, I know that there are so many burdens and joys that we bring um, this day. Um, this week, we were made aware of uh, John Pierce, uh, our beloved John. He was um, unfortunately hospitalized uh, due to an infection, um, but they were able to put him on some uh, IV antibiotics, and he was able to go home. And then as they came home, the entire household got the flu. Um, so they're just having a rough go at their health these past couple months, so prayers for the Pierce family. Um, uh, we, we love you if you're listening and worshiping with us, and we hope you get feeling better soon. And um, we also know in the bulletin that there's been a lot of uh, those that have lost loved ones this past year and even going into the new year. And right now our family, our, our, our prayers and thoughts go out to the Hess family for Andy as he's uh, dealing with the illness with his mother. So Andy, um, as a friend, I'm praying for you. We love you. And we just uh, pray God's speed be with you in, this, in these moments of need. So there's no way for us to go through and know all of the needs that we have, but we can look in the news and we can see another mass shooting taking place this morning. Maybe you were awoken by the, that news as well. Um, we, we know that um, uh, the flooding, um, the, the, the tornadoes, the storms um, that we continue to see, I know they're still recovering from last week. There's a lot going on. So we get this sacred moment. We get this set-apart, holy moment to pray to God, to, to lift up our joys, our concerns, our needs, our wants, our desires, and to, to be reminded of God's presence. So let us never take this time for granted, and let us join together in these moments of prayer. God of grace and of so much mercy, we, become, we come before you on bent knees proclaiming once again your wonder and your might. Not our wonder, not our might, but yours. How is it that you, the creator of all, uh, of all would be concerned with dust like us? Breathe into our dry bones once again. Breathe new life, abundant life, through your Son, Jesus the Christ. And we confess that once again that we have let the excuses of the world get the best of us. We've allowed our excuses of I can't or I don't have enough time or I don't know how keep us from living out our calling on our lives. God, we confess that rather than living in the light, we have chosen darkness and despair. Worried about our lives, concerned for our health, fearful uh, that we are lost from you. The yoke of our burdens lies heavy upon us. Our unwillingness to forgive, our, our fears of one another, our reluctance to share what we have, our divisions and our quarrels. God, we long to turn from the dark and live in your light. Lord, we yearn to, live, to leave uh, what is evil and follow the path of righteousness. So we ask once again that you'd shine your holy light of your love upon us and transform us with your love, that your promised realm may draw near. For we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's reading will be from Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those that back at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I know I gotta stop talking about the band and the choir and the music we have, but I can't help it. Cat in the Cradle, and we're starting out, and it's not even my birthday. That was Coldplay, right? Okay, you guys are just showing off now. So, Coldplay is one of my favorite artists. I absolutely love them. I'm like, yeah, they're doing that, aren't they? That's cool. So, I'm, I'm very pleased. And don't worry, we are not gonna play Cat in the Cradle on Father's Day, okay? So, don't worry about that, all right? Okay. So, I can crawl, I can fly, I have hands, but no legs. Or, e or, or wings either. What am I? Yeah, okay. Smarty pants, I heard you. That's right, it is time. Well, I can crawl, I can fly, I have hands but no legs or wings either. What am I? I am time. Today we continue our No More Excuses sermon series by losing one of our biggest common day buts. And that is, but I don't have enough time. I need you to do this, I need you to do that. God's calling me to do this, but I don't have enough time. Just like all excuses, it has to do with our priorities and what we value as most important in our lives. We started with, but I can't. And we found out very clearly two weeks ago in that sermon series, but I can't. That's right, you can't, but God can. You can't, but God can. And it's talking about valuing ourselves over God. That why did we ever think that we were all that in a bag of chips? God is the, is the end all. Or what about last week when we said, but I don't know how. When did not knowing how ever stop God's amazing work in our lives? Never. God equips the call and really calls those who are already equipped. Just look at Noah. Just look at Jonah being called to Nineveh. He, man, he was not proper to be going over there and sharing the good news. But God still used him in incredible ways. So time, that's what our focus is today, is that excuse of, but I don't have enough time. I use it, you use it, we all use it. It's one of the most prevalent uh, excuses that we use in our society. Time, in my opinion, is the most valuable commodity we have. Uh, we can, once you lose it, you can never get it back, right? Uh, the, uh, Theophrastus, I was, a, uh, I was a, uh, a philosophy major, and I still have trouble saying his name. Theophrastus, a student of Plato and later Aristotle, said, Time is the most valuable thing a man can spend. William Penn, a uh, famous author, wrote, uh, Time is what we want most, but we, but we use the worst. William Shakespeare wrote, Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. We've been there, haven't we? I think we can all agree on the value of time and how we all wish we could value and use it better. So I want to share a story with you. Uh, a lady was taking her time browsing through everything at this very big yard sale. In a conversation with the homeowner, she said, my husband is going to be very angry when he finds out that I stopped at a yard sale. Now, uh, my wife isn't always angry, but she's always like, we don't need that, right? So I, can, I understand that. But the homeowner replied, I'm sure he'll understand when you tell him about all the bargains. And she replied, normally, yes, but he just broke his leg and he's waiting for me to take him to the hospital to have it set. <laughs> Some things in life cannot be delayed, yet we still delay them, don't we? Not for any sinister reason, but because we don't attach any real urgency to them. We just let life happen, let the cards lay where they will, and we just kind of go through life, don't we? I heard a pastor once called this, but the butt-first syndrome. But 
first syndrome. I know, words you're not supposed to put together, but we'll make it work. You know what I'm talking about. I decided to do the laundry. My wife goes, yeah, right. But I decided to do the laundry. I sit down with the intention of doing just that and notice a news notification on my phone. I will do the laundry, but first, but first, I'm going to read the important news article that came up on my phone. After that, I notice some mail on the table. I'll finish reading my news article, but first, I'll look through the mail to see if there's anything that needs my attention. As I leave through the mail, I notice the empty glass on the coffee table from yesterday. I'm, I'm now going to take care of one of the uh, medical bills that came in the mail, but first, I need to put that empty glass in the sink. I head for the kitchen with the glass, but then I notice through the window that our poor dog was left on the line and needs to come in. I put the glass in the sink and saw that last night's snacks were left on the ground, Aiden. Um, and I don't know how the food uh, there uh, got there, Aiden, but I, do, but I do need to get the food off the ground. But first, I need to let the dog in. I just embarrassed my son. I'm sorry. Um, you get the idea, but the end of the day, I managed to get some of the laundry done. The news article is still unfinished. The glass is now in the sink. However, the bills never got paid, and the dog ate the food that was left on the floor. There was so much I meant to do, but I got sidetracked by the butt-first syndrome and the modern-day excuse of, but I didn't have enough time. And yes, an argument for ADD can be made, but we have all been here before. And on February 5th, we will focus on one of the biggest current distractions, and that is the use of technology, but I digress. But I don't have enough time. It's a real excuse we all use, but what's the heart of when we use that? Do you think these excuses helped up, helped, uh, help, help up against Jesus? When people, if we were to use this excuse, Jesus, I'm going to come follow you. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going I'm to walk in your shadow. I'm going to do everything that you've done, even go to the cross. But first, I got to go do something. But I, 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 I got other things I got to take care of first, but then I'll come. And of course, we know that answer from reading through our gospel today. Luke chapter, six, uh, chapter 9, excuse me, we know that didn't hold up. As Jesus was walking along the road, he encountered three men, okay? So we got three different excuses or problems and situations we're going through today. The first one, he, sa he says, uh, Jesus comes up to me and says, um, I will follow you wherever you go, Jesus. We've all probably felt like this at some point uh, or another, we, where we get caught up in the moment or had a mountaintop experience, we, where we... Um, you know, a time when you felt uh, on fire for God, when we first came to faith, when we went to a conference, a camp, a workshop, when, uh, when worship was very special, God grabbed a hold of us and I said, all right, God, you got me. I, I, I've been waiting. This was the sign. I'm ready to go. I'm all in. And during our mountaintop experience, we feel so close to Christ that we said in our hearts, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'm yours. Do with me as you will. Your servant is here, Lord. Use me. But if we're honest with ourselves, time has gone by. And the truth of the matter is that we have lived pretty ordinary lives since then. <gasps> I know, what a terrible thing to say. There have been plenty of instances where we could have served Christ better, but somehow other things got in the way. Notice Jesus' response to him. He says, Lord, I will follow you. I'll go wherever you go. I'll, I'll drink from your cup. I'll, I'll die your death. I'll do what you call me to do. Lord, I am all in. And Jesus, knowing his heart, responded to him a, a little bit of a, 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 a strange way for us, but a, a very powerful way. Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. In other words, you have no idea what you're actually saying that you're willing to do. Jesus seems to be saying to him in a gentle way, you don't know what you're saying. Following me is not for the faint of heart. It's not for people who are concerned about materials, possessions, or even comforts. It's for people who are ready to put it all on the line. It's not for people who get excited on one occasion, who responds for an hour to a nice, warm, spiritual feeling. It's for people who are ready to be devoted to Christ regardless of their current circumstances or how they happen to be feeling at the moment. Foxes 
have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And this reminds me a lot of time of the rich young ruler that comes up to Jesus and says, how do I get to the kingdom of God? He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes through all these commandments. He's like, I'm holding up all the the commandments of of Moses. Um, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then he says, okay, I see one more barrier in your life. You're really holding on to your stuff, your possessions, all the things that are going on. So I want you to sell all your stuff. And the young man left. We have no idea what he did, but he left sad because he had many possessions. So the same man that says, I'm all in, Jesus says, I know you're saying you're all in, but you haven't done the work to realize you're not, and you're not ready. Notice Jesus' encounter with the second man. Jesus says to him, follow me. And the man replies, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Ah, here's a man suffering from the butt first syndrome. We might wonder what the man's doing talking to Jesus. If his father had just died, what are you doing? Go to your, go to your loved ones. Why are you here listening to the rabbi? In the first century, the Jews buried the dead almost immediately. Then usually the same day. There weren't well-equipped mortuaries to handle such needs back then. He was obviously needed back home. And why does Jesus give him such a hard time, right? He says, Lord, I will follow you, but, but first... Let me go bury my dad. The man makes a perfectly normal request. And Jesus' answer to us, it seems like, Jesus, dude, be cool, man. Be cool, Jesus, right? Don't, don't be so mean. Jesus says, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Listen, you've got other work that you're being called to. If God is really calling you, if I'm really calling you to this work, you don't have time for that. You have to go and do this right now. So what's this about in the common day era for us? When we read this, how does that even translate to us? Commentators differ over whether the man's father had just died, whether he was near death, or whether he had a few years yet to go. As long as my mom and dad depend on me, this man is saying, I better stay home. Hey, I've got a responsibility. There's a situation at home. Once I get that uh, squared away, I will follow you. Then the third man makes a request that is just as reasonable. I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. I, if I'm leaving my wife, I better tell her why. I mean, this is so practical. This all makes perfect sense. Um, hey, hey, these are nice guys, and they want to follow Jesus, but they've got, what? Responsibilities. And so they say to him, yes, but first. Jesus is just as short with the third man as he is with the others. Jesus says to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Obviously, Jesus regarded the statement of the first man that that he would follow him anywhere as superficial, and the replies of the second two as mere excuses. Uh, He could see their hearts. So for us, it's like, man, Jesus, you're, you're really harsh right at this. And I said, listen, I know what they're saying, but I know they're not ready for this. He didn't need any more half-hearted disciples. He wanted people who were ready to make a commitment. And that's where I'm convicted, is that when, as we're going through all these excuses, and we've got one more next week, and we're go- going through this, is like, what is God calling me to be committed to? What is God calling me to be all in about? To let, stop letting excuses get in the way and be that barrier of being who God has called me to be. In this text, a disciple is called to live in union with Christ in Christ's life and mission. And the power of the Spirit adopting a life to discipleship cannot be a part-time or momentary commitment. It is a life-changing shift in direction and priorities in which our human needs and wants become subservient to the call of the Lord. God's call on our life goes first before being obedient to our parents. It goes first forth than being, uh, staying in the covenant of marriage. It goes before the covenant of, 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 that you've made with your kiddos and your family dynamics and the situations you're going on. It rattles our brains and it's hard for our hearts, but it's true. The Christian journey does not demand that we reject our responsibilities to family and vocation, but rather encourages us to see those needs in the light of our, our faith and through the lens of our deepening commitment to Christ. Many of you know this name, Will Williman, uh, Bishop Will, uh, uh, William Williamson, Will, Will, 
Will Willimon is what he's usually called. He's a bishop in the United Methodist Church. He's over at uh, Duke Divinity School. I got accepted, but I didn't go. But I, I, It's expensive, but uh, Duke's a good school. I like Duke. Uh, and most of you, if you're IU fans, you hate Duke, right? That's just the way. Oh. Wow, you don't have to be. There's a big uh, head shaking on that one. Okay, but Bishop Will Willimon tells about a baptism ceremony he participated in when he was in campus ministry for Duke University. A fellow campus minister asked him to participate in the baptism of a graduate student. Great. I mean, when you get invited to do a baptism, that's, that's pretty awesome. The, grand, uh, the grad student was from China. He had been attracted to the Christian faith while a student at Duke. Willimon had met the young man once or twice before and joyfully participated in the baptism. He thought it a bright idea to bring his camera and take a few pictures after the baptism. Um, you can send these pictures to your family back in China, Willimon said. Uh, you can share your baptism day with your friends at home. He said as he maneuvered everyone into place for the snapshots, he noticed that the group looked a little shy and a little awkward. But, but they stood together as he took his picture. After the baptism, the campus minister said to him, Oh, that was embarrassing, you with your camera and all. Embarrassing, Willem asked. Why? Why would it be embarrassing to, to capture such an incredible moment? Well, because now that he's baptized, his colleagues explained, his life has been ruined. His parents say that he will, he will dis, they, they will disinherit him. The government will probably take away his scholarship, and he can't show those pictures to anybody back home. His life as he knew it is over. He's been baptized into Jesus. Because he was baptized, the life as he knew it was ruined. Great sacrifice. God calls us to make sacrifice. God calls us to be all in. And being all in and making that commitment, that excuse about I don't have enough time is not going to work. That excuse about I don't know how is not going to work. When he says, I can't, God says, I know you can't. How many times do I have to tell you this? I'm God and I can. You see, that young graduate student was making a decision that would cause him much pain. He was making a decision to be more than a bystander for Jesus Christ. He was making a decision to be a disciple. He was making the decision to walk in Christ's footsteps, which, with, which cost him much. And I don't know what that sacrifice and commitment is to you. And most of us will never have to be in such a situation where there's persecution or we give up our inheritance. But I'm guessing we've all been in a life-changing moment in our life. Have you ever had something serious happen to you and it changed your entire perspective? Maybe a near-death experience that rocked your priorities. I've I've shared this story with you all many times, but it's still one of these foundational stories that that changed my heart. I um, at one of the, my appointments uh, in, in the past uh, uh, church that I served, um, I would go in each Thursday and I would uh, just sit with people that were getting uh, chemo treatments. Um, and there was one woman that never wanted to talk to me. Always be like, "No, I'm fine," and dismiss me um, all the time. It was a big open area. They were on Lazy Boys and they had their chemo going. Um, and sometimes I was, I was the clown. I would tell jokes, right? I would, I would distract them. And other times we got really personal. I prayed with them. We cried together. We, we talked about their journey. And, and the, the one woman, uh, finally, that dismissed me every time, one time she was wearing a shirt that said, Cancer Sucks. And, um, and, I, and I, I couldn't help myself. I stopped and I said, I said hey, I, I, I know usually you don't want to talk, but I just got to tell you I love your shirt. I think your shirt is amazing. And she goes, thanks, I get a lot of comments on this shirt, but you know, I think I'm going to stop wearing it. And I said, okay, you got me hooked. Now I need to know, why, why would you not want to wear this? And she says, I have now changed my prayers to thanking God for my cancer. And I sit down and I said, okay, you really got to tell me this one. She says, it wasn't until I had cancer that I truly knew God's love for me and the people of God's love had for me. I was alone. I was a miserable person, and I wasn't a great person making poor choices in my life. But when, when reality, when priorities got set in my mind, I realized the, the importance of people, community, and God's love for me. And I have never been the same since. You see, Jesus knew his death was near, and it changed him as it would us. He knew that he was about to be betrayed and be put to death. He knew that he didn't have time to spare. He knew his days were numbered and had to prepare his disciples in his absence. Hey, I'm not going to be with you for a while, so you need to get this stuff right. So we can almost understand why Jesus was so crass 
with these people on the roadside. Partnership with Jesus and his mission will require rugged commitment. The disciple must learn how to uh, respond to rejection and persecution. To be a Christ follower is to walk in the way of Jesus regardless of the outcome. And I don't have time. What this excuse really means is I have my time and God's time. And more specifically, I have my agenda and God's agenda. And there is no time left in my agenda don't you think it's time we change this? Don't you think it's time for us to stop saying, I don't have enough time and saying, God, you are a priority for my life and I'm going to change things up. Paul, a faithful disciple of Jesus, writes in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Now, I, I, I don't want us to, uh, looking at Paul and saying, oh, well, that gives me excuse to be mean to myself, that I see my life of no value. No, what Paul is saying is that I've got my priorities in such a way that I know that no matter what I do, no matter what I say, it's uplift God. And one thing you may have forgotten about Paul is Paul was bivocational. Does anybody know his trade? Yes, say it, Julie. He was a tent maker. You got it. I, I, can, I, I was able to read your lips on that one. That's right. He, he was a tent maker. And so during the week, Paul was busy. He had work. He had a lot going on. And on the weekend, he would go and he would teach and he would do the work they were doing. We can go through the Bible time and time again and say, well, well, they didn't have enough time. They didn't, if they didn't have make enough time, just like we said, but I don't know how, all the innovations and technology that we have would not exist. And we talk about, but I can't, all the people that would have just stopped because they just believed that, oh, I can never uh, break that mark in the mile um, what was it, Andy? Was it the four-minute mile that they thought couldn't be broke? Thank you. So in the history, they thought, no, nobody could ever break the four-minute mile. They could never break it. And then all of a sudden, one person breaks it. And within, I think, a couple months, all these people start breaking that, that mileage. And if we look at this and we look at the view from our own personal self, the reality is, is yeah, that's right. We can't. We don't know how, how, but God does. And God will help us with our priorities. We just have to be willing to move forward. Let's pray. All right, God, we're so thankful for your word and your calling in our life, but we got to confess, Lord, this is three weeks in a row for you messing with our, with our schedules. You're messing with the way that we think. We're, we're, you're messing with our habits. And God, we confess that this is hard work. God, we want to be faithful. We're here. We're trying to be obedient. But God, sin clings to us so easily. Our desires for this world are so heavy upon us that it's hard for us to see the, the neighbor next to us that needs a helping hand. It's hard for us to see ways in which we can share our faith in life-changing ways when we've, when we've taught, when we just don't really talk about that stuff. God, we know that there are so many callings that you have in our life, and we pray that you would continue to work in our hearts, minds, and souls, Lord, that you would help us to be uh, people that follow you wholeheartedly, not just the one that gets caught up in the moment in the mountaintop experience, saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you, and then doesn't do the follow-through. God, not only is it a new year, but this is a new moment and opportunity where we've drawn closer to you. So we ask once again that your Holy Spirit would enliven our hearts. As our pastoral prayer said, that, it would, that you would breathe your spirit into our lungs, that you would refresh our dry bones, and that we could go out and to do the work that you've called us to. Lord, it's hard work, but we know that if we are faithful and we continue to commit to prioritize you in our life, that you will show up in incredible ways, and we give you such thanks for this gift. God, bless us and keep us as we continue to strive toward letting go of our excuses and drawing closer to you. Amen. As William said, that was Coldplay during the offertory. So I come from a long line of punsters. We, we love puns in our family and have since I think I was a toddler at the point like where we were already speaking in puns. So the name of the song we played for the offertory is called Clocks, which is just a little play on the time. Um, next week, we have got a very special surprise for everybody. Wanted to let you know we're going to wrap up this sermon series with a original lyrics written by a member of our congregation to a familiar tune song. 
We've decided that William is not the only one who gets to have a little bit of fun with his play on words. We are also going to have a little play on words as well. So definitely make sure you make it out for this because it's going to be, I guarantee you won't have seen anything like that before. So our closing song today is called Breathe. I invite you to please join along and sing along if you know this song. It's pretty familiar. Like I'm falling behind It's a crazy life 90 miles an hour Moving fast as I can Push a little harder Trying to get the upper hand So much to do with so little time It's a crazy life It's ready, set, go It's another wild day When the stress is on the rise In my heart I feel you say Just breathe Just breathe Will you please stand for our benediction? Jesus calls us to follow and just breathe. Go and tell the news of God's love. Share the grace of God near and far that all may see the glory of God. Go forth and shine with God's light. And I commend you once again. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Fill your love.